Hello everyone and welcome to Farmer Joe Homesteading. It is chilly and my hand is freezing so I'm hoping this is going to be a quick farm update for you guys but you are not going to want to miss it because we have had lots going on here again on the homestead. last farm update I was very concerned that Jesse Sally and June all bred to the little bucklings because they hadn't been cycling with the rest of the herd well only a day later so I came out to do my chores today and I uh, noticed that Sally was being kind of funny she was flagging a lot and just not her usual self. So when I fed the boys, the boys happened to be right up at the gate waiting. Um, and so I figured, you know what, what the heck, I'll just let the boys out because I want to winter them in here anyways. And so I let the billies in and they are all over June and breeding June. So all of that hassle and hoopla from last week with the girls not cycling they are now after five weeks. I noticed that they were being a little bit off. They weren't pacing the billy fence or doing any of the things that the big mature does do, but they just seemed a lot more vocal and just a little bit different. So I went ahead and I let the billies in with the girls because I had been wanting to winter them all together anyways, just for body heat. Um, and because then if anybody didn't get bread, they would be able to get bread again um, if needed. So Buddy and Finn are living here with the girls. And right after I put them out in here, they both bred June. So I knew that they were cycling. I didn't see them breed Sally or Jesse, but they had definitely muck butt, really crusty tails and just really gross hind ends for about three or four days. So. I wrote it all down, marked it on the calendar, and I am quite certain that those three does did end up breeding to the mature bucks. So I'm not sure if they'd bred to them at, or bred to the little ones or not, because there was five weeks between their last recorded heats and their heats um, that they had when they bred to the boys. So usually they come in about every 21 days, so that just... The math just isn't mathing with that. So I'm not sure why they had such a gap in there, but they did all come back into heat and they did all breed to the boys. So they are actually due at the end of April, which is amazing. That's when I wanted them to be due. So we have the majority of the rest of the herd due at the beginning of March and then them at the end of April. So Aloise and my little... My little Everest, they did, they are first fresheners and they did breed with everybody else at the beginning. Um, so those two first fresheners are due in the beginning and then the rest at the end. They have been doing really good though. They're starting to get nice round baby bellies. The boys don't smell and they're being like much, much calmer. Um, so that's been huge. So the boys are definitely chilling out. And yeah, they're all just, they're all looking really, really good. I'm really happy with the herd right now. Um, here's mama's baby belly. Indigo also has a huge baby belly happening. Star is starting to get a bit of a belly. So lots of baby bellies. Good happy. The only other thing I wanted to talk about with the goats is what they are eating now. So I am no longer flushing them. So they are just getting their hay. Um, they are still getting a really nice, good quality alfalfa hay. Um, 
And when that runs out, they will go down just to the normal Timothy, brome, grass, alfalfa mix hay. Um, and then I will supplement with alfalfa on the colder nights. So this is what they are eating right now. And then, of course, they always have access to mineral. They have loose mineral and a mineral block and access to fresh, clean water. And that's about it for the girls. Um, the boys are doing really well. Like I said, everybody is settling in for winter. They're keeping warm. I am still milking Luna and Star and they are doing amazing. And they got a little upgrade to the milk room. So I'm actually milking both of them at the same time. Well, I only have one milk machine. So they come in at the same time and then I milk one and then the other while they're finishing the grain because I found that they took longer to finish their grain than it took for them to milk in the milk machine. So now they get to finish their grain and I get two things done at once. So that's working out awesome. And Farmer Joe is loving having her own milk stand. All right, now over here to the coops. I decided to leave them all mixed together for now. Um, I have that coop going. The majority of them sleep in that coop. And then I still have this coop going and usually only the old birds and a handful of pullets will sleep in here and then the turkeys do their own thing half the turkeys sleep in the coop and the other half sleep up there in the trees so the turkeys are doing really good um i have two white toms and it looks like i do have two white toms uh, or white hens so i've got two toms and the two hens the plan is to use just one of the boys for breeding and save the other for next year because I want to save as many white hens as I can for myself um, so that I can build up more of a flock so that I have more than two hens. So um, for the bronze, I believe I have about eight hens. How many are standing here? One, two, three, four. I hear one, two, three there, so that's seven. And I hear one over there. So I do think there are eight bronze hens. So I've got eight hens and two toms for them. And then... <laughs> what are you doing? You're so silly. So lots of turkeys. Excited for them. They should start laying here soon because a lot of these young girls should be coming up on the eight to nine month age, which is when they usually start. So um, I'm hoping that end of January, beginning of February, we start seeing some eggs from those. So for the chickens, the reason I decided to just leave them as is, is because I only have a few weeks now until everybody has to be together. So mid-January is when I start separating out purebreds, and then we sell rainbow mix eggs for January and February while the breeds are um, like getting everything sorted out. Usually after you separate them, you need to wait six to eight weeks before you get purebred again. So that's what we do. We sell the rainbow mix while we're waiting for that. So all of them are going to stay as is until then. Now, I'm not sure if you can hear them. So we got two more ganders. We had some major fertility problems. So I think I did have it in last week's update that we got the two. They're doing awesome. They integrate into the flock well. They mostly just hang out in that run and make that ruckus all the time. So they've integrated well. They're going to stay and hang out for the winter. And we'll see how they split off in pairs for breeding season. Their breeding season shouldn't be until March. However, last year they started in January because it was so warm. So we'll see kind of how it goes for this year. All right, now on to the hutches and some rabbit news. We sold off all of Livy's babies. So she is solo again, and we're not planning on breeding her until February for some March kits. Amber's kits are doing really well and growing really quickly, and they should be ready to wean here any day. We're going to choose to leave them with her for a little longer because it is her last batch of the year. So hers are going to be ready to wean here soon and be ready for processing. Um, but they are all doing really well, and I'm very thankful that we don't do winter rabbits because all of a sudden it has gotten really, really cold. So in the spring, we had saved some does off of Livy, and the chestnut happened to get away, and she is still around and picks up and cleans up all the rabbit pellets that fall through the wires 
and um, I can't catch her. She has been wild for so long that I can't keep her contained. So because we had that uh, doe get away, I kept back another chestnut. <laughs> Hello, pretty girl. So I have this chestnut doe and this pretty little orangey red doe that I have kept from the newest litters. And then I still have our sweet girl, Kada. And I still have the ermine doe right there. Yeah, so we have a total of six does that we are keeping over winter. I want to do some more experimenting with colors. So I have my red doe amber. I've got the chinchilla doe uh, livy. And then I've kept a back a chestnut. I have the broken steel doe kata and the ermine doe. And then that soft peachy colored doe. So I'm excited to experiment with different genetics. Um, all of them are New Zealand. Uh, they just are all different color patterns. So I'm excited to see what we get for kits for 2024. For boys, for the girls, we still have our Peter in here, and we've still got our Houdini. I think he's hiding in here. Hi, handsome. And because Houdini is so old, we also kept one of his sons. So we have a son off of Houdini and Twilight, who is a doe we have um, moved on. So he is unrelated to everything we have. All of our rabbits and rabbitry stuff is all in one space. So we have the boys all along here and all six does in the hutches in the middle. So it has been so much easier for feeding and watering, especially in this cold weather. And so far, it's still been good cover for them here. And we'll see what the winter brings. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but we really don't have a lot of snow. We usually have quite a bit more snow than this, and it has just been a really weird winter. It snows, and then it melts, and it snows, and then it melts, and it rains, and then it freezes. So it has not been a very um, eventful winter other than that. Like, it just keeps um, going back to spring. Like, we had plus six the other day, and it was beautiful. Um, today is definitely the coldest day. On the thermometer, it says it's not very cold, um, but it feels so cold because of the moisture. Like you can see, we have ice fog again, and we've had ice fog a lot in the last couple of weeks because the moisture content is so high and there's not really anything on the ground insulating, and it's just been very odd conditions. The birds are loving it though because they are able to run around and free range and do all of their things that they love to do without having to trudge through the deep snow because they don't love that and I end up shoveling paths for them. So in that regard, it has actually been pretty nice, but we are missing that insulating layer and the coziness of that deep snow. So we'll see how the rest of the winter goes. This has definitely been a weird one, but that is all that I have for you guys for today for this week's farm update. Make sure you give us a subscribe. It really helps our family out and we hope to see you guys next time. Not yours. <laughs>